Wilson Miles from Black Women TV. Hey, folks, how's it going? Good. <laughs> you know, as I watched this series, I was like, you never know what you're going to get out of every episode. You know, it's comedy, it's drama, it's action. You know, so Ben, you know, you're playing this character that's trying to fit in, you know. So when you take on this role, what part of yourself can you relate to this character? I like to think that any, any, when actors are reading roles that they're playing, there's got to be a little bit of themselves that they see in a character. You know, unless it's totally out of the question. You know, how do you relate to playing Jin? Ben, no, Jin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jin, <laughs> Jin, Ben, what's one. the difference? We're kind of one, mm-hmm. um, truly, I relate. I relate a hundred percent to every single thing that he's going through and every single thing that he did is either something I am currently going through or something that I, I have gone through in the past. And so it was, it was a really personal character for me um, down to the fact that we kind of dress alike too. I would show up on set and the costumers wouldn't know if I was in costume or not because uh, you're not that nerdy. Are you? <laughs> no, but, I, uh, but I do dress schleppy. It's, <laughs> schleppy. it's a thing. Yeah. Okay. And what about you, Amelia? Are you opposite of the pe- character you're playing? I wouldn't say opposite, no, but we definitely do have our, our differences. Um, like, Amelia, we've been talking about today, she's very, like, she's a very healthy teenager. Like, she, she talks about her feelings and is very communicative and indirect in what she wants to say and, and is very... Yeah. open and, and speaking and, and you just hold everything up and i just like in a, in a crumble everything inside and don't say anything. And never let any of it out <laughs> and, and just look yeah, at sad so weepy music i could learn a few things but yeah it's similar in enough ways that i felt very uh, comfortable playing her there's a point in the series you know about revealing which episode where you have to go on a sort of somewhat scavenger hunt have you ever done that before you know ben <laughs> a scavenger hunt well, you know, uh, where, where you know, you know, you have to pick up certain things and look for certain things and do certain things. <laughs> yeah, I've, I have all I have. I have. I look for things all the time. Usually my keys or my phone or my right. wallet. That's my scavenger hunt before I leave every day. Where's my key? Where's my phone? And where's my wallet? I sort of come home and I disperse them right. in all corners of my apartment. Um, I don't know. I, I did an Easter egg hunt once when I was in the second grade. <laughs> it doesn't really compare, I think, to the the sort of the the chump run but um it's you about, didn't put there in toilet paper no we never had to do that unfortunately okay yeah, you know this series has a lot of attention going into it you know and not that you have scenes together but hopefully when you guys got together whether it's the premiere or a read through you know obviously you've got michelle you've got you know key who you got stephanie was there and granted you know you guys were shooting this while we didn't know where that movie was gonna go now it's taking a life on its own now that you know most of them are winners including the film how is it, you know, how was it when you guys were shooting the, the series? It's fantastic. They're, they're wonderful human beings, first and foremost. And mm-hmm. they're wonderful actors. And they're the best, you know, scene partners you could ever ask for. And the best co-workers you could ask for. They're very generous with their spirit. And it's been oh. great to have a front row seat in watching that movie take them to, you know, the, the, to the places and, and the recognition that we always knew that they deserved. Mm-hmm. Sydney, you know, there's a lot of product on TV these days, whether it's streaming, network, cable. Uh, you know, when you're telling people you're on a series, this particular series, what's going to entice them to watch? Because it's all about marketing the shows that people can watch because otherwise, you know, for every new show that ends, there's another one to replace it. We're not like the old days. We get a bunch of repeats, you know, throughout the summer. You wait to see that something new. There's something new almost every day. <laughs> Yeah, I there is always something new, but I, I do think that we got very lucky with this show in that there is not really anything like it. And I know that every marketing marketing team ever tells you to say that, but I, I really do mean it that I, I don't think I've I've ever seen a show like this one. And and again, every marketing team ever has told you to tell you there's something in it for everyone. But again, this one there there really is. Really and is. so I, I think that it's such a incredible show and uh, that everyone will love it if they watch it. I, I couldn't think of a reason why they wouldn't. You know? Incredible it, it is because obviously there's a lot that goes into production, the scenes, the action. That's not easy to do. Congrats on the roles. Congrats on the series. We'll talk down the road. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, Daniel, how's it going? Good, good, good. So, you know, when you're taking on this role that you're playing, you know, how much training did you have to do or was it all a stunt double? Um. 
I did all the fighting myself. If I really? got thrown through a wall, that wasn't me. I'm a little too old to take those hits now, <laughs> but um, um, I enjoy it a lot. So whenever I get a chance to be able to do my own fighting, I, I jump at it, um, partially because uh, it was part of my upbringing since I was a little kid. I've been doing martial arts since I was 12. So to be able to display those skills on screen is always a great opportunity. But I also love doing like Hong Kong style action and kind of bringing that to American screens. So I, I personally, like I try to keep at my age, you have to keep in shape all the time. Uh, Cause if you take a two week break, it's like starting all over again. So I'm always training. I'm always training like three, four days a week. Um, and so for this, because of all the experience I had on like into the badlands, there's so many fights on that show. Um, it was pretty easy to jump into this and, and do all the wire work and all that stuff. Um, so it was just you a matter say of like, tailor made for you then, huh? What's that? You can say the role is tailor made. Yeah, kind of, sort of. I mean, a lot of aspects of it, not just the fighting part, but, you know, what the character's going through as a father and his, you know, his son running amok, like all that stuff I was dealing with in real life as well, too. So a lot of that stuff um, uh, informed on me how to play this role. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, for some of the characters, it's about their characters trying to fit in in whatever society. And then obviously there's a point where we see your character in the younger years trying to fit in, you know, how would you relate? You know, obviously, you just mentioned how you related to the character because both of you are, are athletic and you have good fighting skills. But is there anything else that they, people can take from your character as a father that they can relate with? Sure. Um, I think one aspect of the film is that, or the show is that he's struggling with trying to be a father and trying to be a good father, right? He's, he's, he's a mythological god and he's taking on so much responsibilities in heaven and trying to make sure everything in heaven is happening. But he's also got to deal with real world issues of his son, like running amok and going on this mission on his own and stealing his, his staff, right? And I think that is really indicative of real life because, you know, a parent sometimes has to juggle a job and then their kid getting put in detention or getting called home from school. And like, how do you deal with that? And how do you sit, become a good role model for your own kid? And I think Monkey King is trying to do that in this show. He's trying to become a good father. He's trying to allow his son to grow and make mistakes on his own, but then not get into too much trouble, you know? And so I think those themes are very universal and they mirror kind of what um, Chin Han and, and Ben Wong's character are going through in terms of their father-son relationship. So it's really cool to be able to do it on a mythological level and on a really human level and kind of combine it all together. You know, when you work with the directors and the writers on this series and, you know, some of the stuff that you're doing, you've done before, but is there anything new that you learned from doing the series that can, you can probably take on to your next project? Was it, it was a new fighting skill? Was it it's a different way to act? You know, what did you get out of it? Yeah, I, I thought, you know, it's really interesting because I, most of my career was in Asia and then the past few years have been in the United States. And I, it was interesting to see this project be a real um, mixing pot or a real melting pot of, of the two cultures. And we were able to bring like, you know, Chinese stunt choreographer Peng Zhang over from Shang-Chi and from various movies in China over to work with like American cast and crew here. And that you can actually do that. You can actually meld both worlds together and make it work. That was one aspect. But the other aspect was like, the amazing storytelling that um, Kelvin Yu and Jean Lun Yang um, were able to get across the screen because the book is not as detailed as what's happening in the story over eight episodes. And that um, how Kelvin was able to um, humanize the Monkey King story and that storyline I was talking about with the father-son relationship, but also tell this very intimate story about what it's like to be the son of an immigrant family and how you fit into American society. And then, to get those two seemingly dis disparate worlds of like, you know, mythological, mythological Chinese characters and this high school coming of age stories and mash it together and make it work. Um, that was really cool to me to see that that can actually work on, on paper and on screen. You know, the series is going to obviously grab attention because not only it's uh, one of a kind because you haven't seen it, at least not that I have on TV, yeah. you can make comparisons to here and there, but but also when you have, you know, the ca the actors, including yourself and Michelle and other people, whether it's the bros or big or small, there's something that everybody can watch it and have a reason to watch it. So congrats on the road. Congrats on the series. We'll talk down the road. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for your support. What's well, Miles from Black from TV? Hello, folks. How's it going? Oh, yeah, hey. Hi. Hey. You know, what a series this is. You never know what you're going to get per episode. <laughs> 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 you know, you're getting some drama. You're getting some comedy. You're getting action. You know, so when you take on the characters that you're playing, 
I like to think that any actor likes to, you know, there's a little bit of the character they're playing similar to hopefully your background or something. There's a trait there. How would you say you relate to the character you're playing? Yen? How am I related? Well, we're both women. We're <laughs> both mothers. I think that's how I relate to her. Uh, we, ha we have to face the same kind of, uh, you know, relationship problems. We have problems with our children. We would try our best to, to for the best for our family, and that is that is how I relate to her. And she's she's kind, she's warm, she's cheerful. She is, she's she can be humorous. Uh, she's flawed. She's not perfect, but she try her best. Mm -hmm. What about you, Chen? Well, I relate to her. To your character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I re relate to him. Uh, we both uh, uh, take off our shoes before we go into our apartments. Uh, we both enjoy chicken feed soup. Uh, but more than that, I think uh, it, it's such an interesting uh, journey for me here as well. You know, I came here about 16 years ago to do my first American film and then obviously being uh, in, in an environment that that is new, you know, I think I can relate to to that, to being the outsider and then finding my way around uh, Hollywood is pretty much the same as uh, Simon finding his way around the workplace. Exactly. The, the word you use, outsider, you know, it seems like most of the characters are trying to find a way to fit in, you know, to fit in so they can be normal. You know, at what point was it your career? Was it on the set? Did you find yourself? I'm good to go. I know the cast. You know, because sometimes even when you're working with a cast, you're trying to fit in so that way that you can establish a chemistry so that we all can see it on screen. When did you feel it was all good? You know, during the table read, during the second day of shooting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for me, for me, I mean, with with Ben, Ben Wong, who's playing Jin, Jin Wong. It's on our first read on Zoom. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel the instant connection. I feel the instant uh, uh, click with him, and 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 just like so familiar with him, like he's my son forever. And mm -hmm. with Chan, uh, I think it's when we first sat down and have coffee and talk about the character. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Then and then I yeah. It was second day, third day I arrived in LA. So this is very interesting. Yeah, she is second and third day she arrived from LA. Uh, she had these packets of of coffee from Singapore, uh, uh, from, Singapore from a very renowned uh, coffee place in Singapore. And I hadn't been home for a while. So, I mean, that was the first thing we did. We sat down. Uh, we made a cup of uh, homemade, coffee. homemade coffee. When I say home, I mean Singapore and uh discuss the script so that was that was the minute we connected and then obviously over the course of the couple of uh, the next few months uh, countless meals ramen uh sushi countless uh, coffee <laughs> countless coffees burgers and and we we had our son with us as well uh ben uh wang so and the other kids too so that was that was really fun but that that really allowed us to to bond and get to know each other well even though the series can be mystical, you know, you guys are playing parents to, you know, like I said, a kid who's trying to fit himself in this world. When people watch the series, are they going to get an idea as to what you guys are going through? Or is it totally fantasy? Yeah. There you go. Anyone can answer it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to. Yeah. Can you rephrase the question? The, the question is, you know, as the parents on the show, you know, yeah. um, where audience get an idea from what they when they're watching your characters, you know, with the scenes that you guys are doing, you know, one trying to keep a job, another one trying to find a way through life. Will they sense to see themselves in these characters or is it just fantasy? Right. Well, we hope we hope so. You know, I think the 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 fancy the fantasy element of the show is taken care of by the mythological uh, characters, right? The gods and the demigods, uh, all very compelling. But I think what we try to do with the show, as we explore the characters of Simon and Christine, was to ground it in some kind of reality, so that the audience actually gets an entry point into this world that Jean Leung Yang has created. Uh, something that that is very vital and important in the conversation right now. 
Mm-hmm. And before I let you go, what was the day attracted to saying yes? Was it the script, the time frame in which you can do it, or the character you're playing? All of the above. <laughs> yes. Uh, all of the above is the script, is the time frame, is the zeitgeist, is how is you know it's it's us coming together and and being available to each other from the from you know the directors to the producers to the writers to the actors you know it's 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 almost anytime you put a production together like this is almost like alchemy is magic right so oh. uh, i'm very uh, i'm just very happy with with who we got really job well done congrats on the roles congrats on the series hopefully we'll talk down the road Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Wilson Ralph, back from your TV. Hi, Gene. How Melvin? How's it going? Good, Good, man. How are you? So, Gene, what's it like, obviously, having this adaptation brought to life and seeing all the, the characters and actors on the show? Yeah, I, I've used this word a lot. It's been very surreal. It's been very surreal. So that that book started as a, a, a self-published comic, which meant I would write and draw an issue. I'd take it to Kinko's. I'd run off copies, staple them by hand and then try to sell them by hand at local conventions and, um, you know, through local stores. So to go from that, to go from my local Kinko's to to here is, uh, it's astounding. It's nothing I could have imagined. And Melvin, you know, not only do you have a cast, but you have a cast. Obviously, when this was being put <laughs> together, who knew how far, you know, Michelle and Key and Stephanie would go. Now, you know, you're all back again and on this one. You know, it's, it took a whole new meaning for you, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we um, we won the cast lottery, Wilson. Uh, like, it just uh, crazy, you know? Um, we, you know, we went through the casting process like we always do. And in, in this case, um, you know, Michelle was always a global icon. And, like, getting her was always a get, uh, Oscar or not. And, um, and then Daniel Wu, too. Daniel Wu and Key and all these guys. And we just you know, looked at it as who would be perfect for each role. And, you know, uh, it went from, you know, uh, the Michelles of the world all the way to like, you know, Ben and, and Jimmy, you know, play the two kids. Um, and it, it, it all worked out creatively. And then, you know, uh, they went and, you know, won some Oscars. <laughs> so. so either one of you that can answer this, what was more important to be on screen? Uh, the story, the fighting, the comedy, you know, or the fantasy sequence, you know, because there's a lot packed in here and it takes a lot of the editing process to put it in to at least one episode. So was there a level, was there a level of importance that you wanted to get out for you? Uh, um, Gene, was it, you know, obviously as you put this, as you see as it unfolding, you know, were you satisfied with how each episode was being played out, you know, as far as how, you know, how you wanted to construct, especially when you're doing, an episodic series. Yeah, I, I think Kelvin, you, our showrunner, and his writer's room just did an incredible job of ju- juggling all of the different aspects of the show, right? And and that really comes from the book. The book actually has these three different worlds. Um, I, I think it's easier to do it in a 200-page graphic novel than across eight episodes of television. But he and his writer's room just were able to crack that nut in such a brilliant, brilliant way. You asked about the importance of all the different elements. I think the most important element is the the story. It's the heart. The heart is the Asian American experience. It's the experience of feeling like you might not fit in, feeling like you might be a little bit ashamed of where you come from and what you look like and kind of working through that. And all of the other elements from the fantasy to the jokes all of that is just in support of that underlying heart, that underlying essence. And that's my question for you, Melvin. Obviously, you want to illustrate the Asian experience, but at the same time, some of these themes are here that are in there are universal. You know, mm-hmm. was that obviously the whole point where you didn't want to centralize where you're just driving away a different an audience, but you're bringing in an audience that can see this and say, okay, I can relate to it. It doesn't have to be Asian. That's right. I, I think, you know, and I always use this as a, a little bit of an analogy. Uh, I don't know if you remember when you're a kid, there's a toy, I think it's called the Chinese finger trap, you know, when you put your finger in, right? And if you try to pull out, it gets tighter, but if you push in, it comes loose and you get your fingers come out. And to me, it's the, it's that same idea in storytelling, right? Gene's book is the, the essence of it is so specific to the, the Asian American experience, but because of that, it's so specific to the immigrant experience. 
and the minority American experience, right? And I think when you're you point out such authentic details, it becomes universal, you know, rather than skirting away from them, you know. Um, and you know, I, I found um, throughout all the shows that I've, I've worked on, when you're when you really go authentic and and if you're trying to um, represent a certain group or, or someone and you go deep, that's when everyone respects it and understands it and relates. Job well done, guys. Obviously, I'm waiting to see what everybody else says on Twitter because I already know what I feel. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, it's like it's good to see. You know, every episode is totally different, and I love the action sequences. So keep it going. Thanks, we'll talk Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you much. so much, Wilson. Thank you, Wilson. Mm -hmm. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks.